Online World Part 2. In this nugget, we are going to cover some troubleshooting steps using the TCP dump application, as well as some firewall troubleshooting and verification commands. We're going to go through some things that you really need to know and some things that you really want to be familiar with just to make you that much more secure and that much more confident in your skills that you have as a Checkpoint Certified Security Expert. So let's continue on from here, take some wonderful notes, and review exactly what you need to know using TCP Dump as well as some firewall troubleshooting and some verification skills. Hello everyone, let's discuss the next troubleshooting command line option that you need to know as a network security professional and that is TCP dump. Now TCP dump is pretty much a favorite I guess overall command line troubleshooting tool for most network security professionals and Unix administrators out there because it works really well, it's pretty simple to use and it's something that you need to know as well in your career with Checkpoint products because it's going to be really useful to you. So the first thing we want to see here is if we just issue a basic TCP dump command on our actual firewall here, what we're going to see is that this command pretty much just dumps a lot of information. Much like FW Monitor, it dumps in so much information we really can't decipher exactly what's going on. So we can stop that, we can clear that command and we can actually change up exactly what we're getting here. And if we do a dash dash help, we can see some of the actual options that are available to us here. So let's expand that out a little bit. And this gives us, we can do a dash F to look at a file, or we can do a dash I to look at an interface. We can do an actual dash R to look at a file. And we look at that flag, we can do a dash S for a snaplin, or we can do a dash T to look for a type. We can do a dash U for a user, we can write it to a file. And we do a dash E for a particular secret and we're in a regular expression. So the thing that you typically are wanting to do as a network security professional is to be able to identify traffic. So then the way you do that is a TCP dump space dash I. And then you need to specify the interface. In this case, we're going to use the external interface. So we use dash I space ETH zero. And then off of ETH zero, let's say we want to look for port 22 and we start listening on that port and if we see any type of SSH based traffic it would pop up there so let's say on that same type of information we want to see ports 3389 for Microsoft remote desktop traffic and as we can see here that quickly tells us that we have from our nugget cluster machine or our, our nugget host which is 172.20.20.6 we're hitting the publicly NATed IP of this particular host right here for 172.20.20.25 so we have a few other options we can do dash O or uh, TCP dump dash I space ETH 0 for that particular port we can also write it to a file with a dash w command if we wanted to do that as well we would need to give it a name so we can do bobby dot text if we wanted to or let me add another b in there and let's see what that looks like guys okay so we're writing it to an actual file and we can do an actual list on the file now and we can do a more on the file and we can see all the information is kind of encrypted and garbled and all that great information but you pretty much see the point so we'll do rm space dash r let's remove that file let's clear that alright so let's look at some additional commands here now under tcp dump most of the time you're going to want to filter for traffic that's coming toward your firewall and um, you're going to do a TCP dump dash I ETH zero if it's your external interface and you're going to look for a host typically say so if your host is like 4.2.2.2 or something like that you would um, issue the public IP or whatever that's coming toward your firewall to be able to look at that type of data and we could also look for a particular protocol if we want to see TCP packets we can look at TCP packets if you want to see all UDP packets you can see that as well as well as ICMP 
So if there's any ping packets that are going on, you'll see that sh showing up as well. So you can see how that's very useful there, and you can really use that. Let's say if you want to see an actual output of a connection that's going outbound. So what we could do here is we could do a DCB dump on ETH2 in this case which is our internal interface on our firewall and we can say that we want to see traffic from host 10.20.1.25 we can dump on that immediately and just get a plethora of traffic that's trying to leave this box but what we can do is do not port 22. Okay, so it doesn't like that particular syntax. We'll do not 22. Alright, so let's see here. Host. Let's try this. This syntax we may have to look at a little bit more here. But say not 22. Okay, so pretty much what we can do is if we specify a host it doesn't really allow us to modify the overall structure there so we can do TCP dump dash I ETH2 and then we can say not TCP 22 so it doesn't like that as well alright guys well give me one second let me check this command here because this is kind of making me making my head spin that this is something I typically do and I must be making a simple mistake here so let's pause for a second and I'll check this out okay guys well I finally wrapped my head around what I was trying to say there and um did I mention this is live and on the go and these are the type of things and thoughts that you know are gonna fly through your head as you're trying to demonstrate things even in your own environment but anyway pretty much what I wanted to go with is if we want to issue a TCP dump on a particular interface and we want to exclude a certain port, we could issue something like this TCP dump dash I ETH2 and we're not port 22. So, what that is going to do is that's going to show us everything on that actual syntax except for port 22. So, we see like packets going outbound for remote desktop and we say not port 22. And let's get adventurous and say and not port 3389. See if it'll take that. All right, so we see that as well. So we can see how we can combine those types of commands just to use exactly what we want to do for TCP dump. So there's a lot of options with TCP dump. Like I said, it's going to be one of those things that you're going to use almost every day as a uh, checkpoint certified security expert. And it's some really good troubleshooting steps that you really want to know about. So go ahead and dive in make up different expressions and paths and ways to look for traffic and different things and it's just going to be a really powerful tool that all network security professionals really need to have under their belt and they need to be able to use TCP dump on a daily portion or daily fashion just to basically give you the types of troubleshooting steps and skills that you need to have so that looks cool for now we're gonna go ahead and move into some of some actual firewall verification commands and some different commands that you need to know for specific checkpoint options via the command line and let's go ahead and leave TCP dump for now like I said go ahead and use it get comfortable with it and it's something that's really gonna help you harness the power of the command line Alright guys, let's review some basic just firewall level command line options that you need to know in order to be able to administer checkpoint firewalls. Now this might be review for some of you guys, but for some of you guys that are new to this, these basic commands and looking at things can really help you out. Now we already have seen that a cpconfig command will give us the actual options to be able to view certain options that are running on the particular firewall. We can look at our SICK options, we can disable cluster membership, we can automatically start checkpoint products, and this is where we also saw we can enable or disable Core XL. So we have those options available. So we need to know what cpconfig can do for us. Now the next command that we really need to know about is just a basic command. Let's just do a clock command. And C-L-O-C-K, if we issue our clock command, that gives us our time. We can issue an uptime command. 
That tells us how long the firewall has been up. We can issue a date command. That gives us the date. We can do an FW space stat and that actually gives us the policy information that is loaded on the firewall. We can do an FW ver. We can do an FW ver space dash K to list the actual kernel version. Now one other thing that you're going to want to do from time to time is you may want to verify if there's a management server or a firewall or if you're dealing with a standalone as opposed to a distributed environment. So you can also issue an FWM space ver on a firewall and it will tell you that this is not a smart center station. So if you're not sure if a firewall install is a standalone or distributed, this command right here will pretty much tell you. So if you do an FWM space ver, it'll tell you that it's not a smart center. You know you're only dealing with a firewall. So the next couple commands that we want to look at are just some basic structuring of the system. Now we can also do a CP stop and a CP start to stop and start checkpoint services. Now I'm not going to do that here because I don't want to kill my actual putty session, but you get the point that we have those options available. We have a CPRID stop and start if we want to stop the checkpoint remote installation daemon. So we can do a CP RID start and it tells us that it's already running and then it gives us our PID ID for the remote installation daemon which is typically a daemon that's going to be used kind of via smart update to push and um, to pull package information from a checkpoint firewall we can also look at some information on the actual date and the actual command line options for some additional FW commands. So let's go ahead and clear off this and just issue an actual FW. So we can do an FW ver, we can do an FW tab, we can do an FW log commands, we can log switch, we can repair our logs, we can fetch logs, we can do all those types of information. And so by default, it can actually give us a little wizard here to show us what we can do with our FW command. Of course we have our standard trace route and our ping commands and NS lookup and all the stuff that you would typically have via any command line option those type of things are available. Now occasionally you may want to try to fetch your topology from an, a running smart center so you could do an FW space fetch space and then you give it the IP address or the host name that this particular firewall could resolve in our case we'll use the IP which is 1021.20 and what it's going to do is it's basically going to reach out to our management server and it's going to say it's going to install our or install our security policy standard on all dot all nugget dash firewall a1 so once that's done, it tells us that it was successful and it reached out and grabbed our policy. It's something that you're going to want to use from time to time. You may want to try to fetch the policy rather than having to jump out to your smart center to push it toward the firewall. Those options are available. Now the next thing I want to look at here are some basic commands that you're going to want to know whenever you're trying to look at just basic six state and, and different things like that occasionally you may want to know if your firewalls currently six status is healthy and typically we'll do that by diving into smart dashboard and looking at the actual communication tab on a, on a button whenever you actually do go ahead and show me the state of the communication by saying check six status. We'll look at that via the command line or via the GUI I should say. Now we can actually do this via the command line as well. So you can do a CP underscore and you have to make sure that you don't make any spaces here otherwise it turns into a copy command. But we're going to do a CP underscore conf and if we hit enter on that it kind of prints out everything that we have available and the different options that are available as well but the one I want to look at is um, the CP underscore comp and we can do sick 
we'll see what we have here and it gives us some additional options we can check our current sick state we can initialize a sick key and does not require a restart we can set reset sick via the command line we can basically pull a certificate for a dynamic IP via this command but the one I typically use the most is the actual sick state so I'll, I'll use this right here and the good thing about putty you can always just highlight and paste and it'll give us that and tell us that our trust is established so it's a command that you may want to use from time to time just to make sure if you're working on a firewall that it has its current sick state to its management server so that's a good command to keep with you as well now anytime as we look into some clustering information we'll look at that as well in this particular series we're actually going to do an upgrade to R70 for our nugget cluster currently we're running um, R65 if we do our FWVR now we're actually going to step into an actual upgrade process of that so I'm not going to dive into all the cluster command line options for now but you pretty much see a lot of the things that you want to be able to use uh, one one uh, another example is CP lick so we can do a CP lick put if we want to put a, a license key on a box we can do a print a check and we can also look at contracts so if we do a CP lick space print it'll give you actual you know like contract coverage and all that different types of stuff that's gonna pop up and you can see all the info different contract information and all that great stuff is printed as well but that's the kind of options that you'll see and those are just some basic command line options that you need to know about um, of course there's always an FW space unload local and what that command will do is basically unload the security policy and turn the firewall into a basic router and, and typically you only need to do that during a setup or a troubleshooting option where you don't want any type of policy on the firewall you would use the FW space unload local to unload the security policy from the firewall but those are some basic commands so I just want to make sure you guys have seen those and those are the type of things you're going to want to use from day to day it's kind of a review for some of you and I know it's going to be new to some of our new people who are just now diving into R70 but these are skills that you need to know and some command line options that will definitely help you out with your daily work so that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover for basic command line options and troubleshooting and different things like that and that will pretty much take care of a good 99 percent of your troubleshooting options that you're going to want to do via the command line because like I said checkpoint makes great GUI tools but knowing how to do a few things on the command line will never hurt you so that should take care of it for now let's move on from here Wow, I know we learned some very valuable skills inside a command line world part 2 where we saw some troubleshooting steps and some tr basic command line traffic verification that you really want to know about using the TCP dump application. We also saw some firewall troubleshooting and verification commands where you can basically check your work basically and just to make sure that you know exactly how your checkpoint firewall environment is deployed and we saw exactly how to do some FWVR as well as some clock commands and some other additional commands that you want to know about just to make sure you, that your checkpoint environment is running as you would expect it to be I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing